Good afternoon, Mary News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, teacher accused of sexually assaulting minor granted bail. A St. Catherine based educator who allegedly sexually assaulted an underage girl has been granted $500,000 bail. The 23 year old appeared before the St. Catherine Parish Court on Thursday on charges of grievous sexual assault and having sexual intercourse with a person under 16 years old. The conditions attached to his bail are that he reports once weekly to the police, surrenders his travel documents, and does not contact the complainant. He is to reappear in court on July 9. It is alleged that the accused sexual assaulted the 15-year-old complainant during a retreat for educators in May this year. The alleged traumatic experience was related to a friend of the teenager. It was then related to the child's parents, one of whom is a colleague of the accused. The Center for Investigation of Sexual Offenses and the Child Abuse was informed and a probe was launched. The accused surrendered to the police and was subsequently charged following a question and answer session on Wednesday in the presence of his attorney. Man killed four injured at a Rondo Robin in Trench Town. Detectives assigned to the Kingston West Police Division are now investigating the shooting death of an unidentified man at a Rondo Robin on 6th Street in Trench Town on Saturday night. According to a report from the police, the deceased was murdered by unknown assailants at approximately 9 p.m. Four other people, including three females aged 59, 39, and 49, were also injured during the incident. The injured people were transported to the hospital where they are being treated. The crime scene was secured and processed. Police are now trying to identify the perpetrators as well as a motive for the attack. Father and the son among five killed in Hanover, curfew imposed. A 72-hour curfew has been implemented within the Lucy Police Division after five people were killed, including a father and a son, within 18 hours on Thursday. The curfew, which started at 6 p.m. on Friday, encompasses the areas of Lucy, Brissett, Elgin Town, and the Johnson Town. According to reports, around 2.30 a.m. on Thursday, 35-year-old Teron Copperhart of a Lances Bay address reportedly drove his motorcar to a bar in the Lucy Transportation Center where he was shot. Hours later, 41-year-old Merrick Calvin and his 23-year-old son, Merrick Calvin Jr., both of a Johnson Town District address and a Michael Collins of Drew Hill District, were shot and killed at a bar under construction in Johnson Town. Reports are that at around 9 p.m., the Calvins and the Collins were among a group of people at the establishment when they were approached by two armed men in dark clothing who had reportedly traveled to the location on a motorcycle. The men were shot in the upper body and were later pronounced dead. Another was injured in the incident. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang, who visited the Lucy Transportation Center and the Johnson Town area on Friday, has linked the attacks to a community-based conflict involving some men who were previously in police custody but were released because residents were reportedly reluctant to provide information. Meanwhile, a curfew which was originally implemented in the Green Island Police Division more than a week ago has been renewed. The renewed curfew encompasses the areas of Orange Bay and the Logwood and was originally implemented following the killing of two brothers during an alleged confrontation with the police on June 4. The deceased men were identified as Henrique Harvey and Romain Harvey, both of Green Island addresses. The police reportedly went to the Dam Road area of Green Island to execute a search warrant when the men were killed. During the incident, two firearms were allegedly seized. Head of the police Era 1, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police Glenford Miller, stated then that the Harvey brothers were actively involved in the crime situation in the Green Island area, which stems from activities with the Dam Road gang. Following the killing, residents staged a demonstration in the area, which also impacted the traffic flow on the Green Island main road. Man found with illegal gun in waste band. A 43-year-old man from Anata Bay was reportedly found with an illegal gun in his waste band 
after the police were allegedly tipped off about the weapon. Reports are that on Wednesday, June 12, a Nata Bay Police Division received the information of a person in possession of an illegal weapon in the Cane Lane area of Nata Bay. They responded and conducted a snap raid in the area where a concrete board house structure belonging to Calvin Ziggy Haywood was searched. Nothing was reportedly found inside of the house, but the police allegedly proceeded to search Haywood and subsequently seized a black Stoger 9mm pistol with ammunition from his waistband. He was arrested and taken into custody, where he was charged with possession of a prohibited weapon and ammunition. The Anata Bay police are investigating. Injured a Jamaican living in France, alleges attack racially motivated. As the world's gaze shifts to France next month for the eagerly anticipated Olympic Games, it was a fractured view last weekend for a Spanish town Jamaican living in the European nation who was left nursing a bloodied eye after what he deemed a racially motivated attack. Sian Thompson, who has called France home for the past six years, was struck in the face by a man who was among a group of six persons in the wee hours of June 8 in the city of Reynos, where Thompson resides. The attackers, consisting of three women and three men, provoked the incident, said Thompson, a freelance business development consultant with the World Beat Music Group and a volunteer ambassador for EU4UA.org, a non-profit organization dedicated to assisting displaced Ukrainians in need of housing. As I crossed the one-way street on Rue de la Monnaie to the other pedestrian walkway, Passing all the pedestrians, one male attacker remarked that I was too close to them. We were all moving westward, and I found it odd that he made that comment right after pushing me, he told the news in an exclusive interview, detailing the series of events after he left a nightclub and routed to another. Thompson, who holds dual Jamaican and Spanish citizenships, said he stopped to ask why he was shoved and retaliated by pushing back his alleged aggressor. In response, they all cornered me against the wall in front of a store where there are cameras. One of the men then delivered a direct blow to my left eye, causing severe injuries. During this assault, they made comments about my skin color, stating that I was from Mali, Africa. I managed to free myself from the corner and took out my phone to start recording. One of the women in the group sarcastically remarked, He speaks, Thompson recounted. Another woman mocked me by saying, a Pelela police, and jokingly covered her eyes. Two of the men shielded themselves from being recorded, while the other male shouted to others, let's go. Eventually, one of the women knocked the phone from my hand to stop the recording. They all fled the scene after the incident, he added. With Jamaican familial roots in Trelawney and St. James, the long since relocated Thompson, who has always lived in the United States, England and Scotland told the news he made a report to the Rennes police, but prior to doing so, sought emotional release through the online community in the immediate aftermath of the incident. Having knowledge of the police system in France, I knew that officers wouldn't arrive at the scene immediately and that the attackers had already fled. I quickly turned to social media for help, using Facebook Live for the first time. The presence of viewers made me feel more secure as I explained the situation, he said. Continuing, the 47-year-old Thompson shared I knew the location of the main police station in Rennes, which stated online that it was open 24 hours. I headed there while still on Facebook Live. However, upon arrival, I found a sign indicating that it wouldn't open until 8.30 a.m. I repeatedly pressed the call button and shortly after, four officers arrived in a minivan. I told them what had happened and expressed my need to file a report. They informed me that due to my injuries, I needed to be seen by emergency medical staff and couldn't file a report until 8.30 a.m. The emergency crew arrived and I was taken to the hospital for treatment. At the hospital, my injuries were assessed virtually without any x-rays, and I was prescribed a paracetamol and ice, Thompson recounted. I returned home and filed an online report on Saturday, June 8, 2024, at 10 a.m. On June 10, 2024, at 10.20 a.m., I received an email from the police station instructing me to come directly to the station with evidence to file the report in person 
as my online report was cancelled. I went to the station and I filed a report at 3.08 p.m., he continued. Thompson said he has experienced this type of racially motivated behavior at least five times, however none resulted in physical injury. In each of these instances, I was provoked, teased, and pushed simply for being in a place where they preferred I was not present, he said. Outraged but not entirely surprised by the reported attack on Thompson is Nazila Mays Dumontet, vice president of Jasmine France, a non-profit organization that promotes a brand Jamaica in France and assists the Jamaicans there to transition to a life in the European state. Racism is very subtle in France, Mays Dumontet said, before sharing a domestic incident with her then-white husband years earlier that left her with blood running down her face and the police officers telling her to leave for her marital home. That was the solution not to take the man to the station, Ms. Demontetta told the news. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.